We're talking about relational verification using reinforcement learning. Hi, thanks. So uh, yeah, I'm Osbert Bastani. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about our work on relational verification using reinforcement learning. Uh, this is joint work with Jia Chen, Jia Yi Wei, Yu Feng, and Ishil Dilig. So the goal of relational verification is to basically prove properties involving multiple programs. So a, kind of a standard example is if you have two programs, um, you might want to prove that the two programs are semantically equivalent. Um, or more formally, assuming that the programs are deterministic, you want to prove that as long as their inputs are equal, then the corresponding outputs are equal as well. So in addition to reasoning about multiple programs, uh, relational verification can also be used to reason about multiple executions of the same program. And as a consequence, it has a large number of applications. For example, in addition to equivalence, um, it's also used for proving properties such as non-interference, side channels, and so on and so forth. Um, however, uh, this reinforced, sorry, relational verification um, has a lot of challenges due to the large search space. So at a high level, uh, it, the state-of-the-art relational verif verification tools work by reducing the re relational verification property to a safety property. And um, this, there's a really large search, spa search space of strategies for doing so um, because there are many inference rules that are needed to try to figure out how to synchronize the programs. And only a small fraction of these candidate proof strategies will actually successfully prove the desired property. Thus, it's really important to, have, to develop search heuristics to scale up verification, relational verification to large problem instances. However, um, because there are also a lot of diverse application domains, we also need to develop um, different search strategies for different domains. And uh, it's really expensive to manually develop these search strategies for every new domain that we come across. And therefore, um, our goal in this project is to try to automatically learn search strategies by, that leverage the problem structure in order to speed up um, the search process. And we're going to do so um, by using machine learning in conjunction with a training data set of relational problem instances, relational verification problem instances from some target domain. So given a bunch of problems from um, some application domain, we're going to feed these into our machine learning algorithm. Uh, in particular, this is going to use reinforcement learning, which is kind of geared toward, it's, it's a kind of machine learning that's geared towards solving search problems, such as our relational verification problem. And then this algorithm is going to output a set of search heuristics encoded as a neural network. So once we have these search heuristics, we're additionally going to propose a way to leverage them to speed up relational verification for new problem instances. In particular, given a new relational verification problem, we're going to feed it to a neural network guided relational verification algorithm, and this algorithm will determine whether or not relational property, the relational property holds. So I'm going to go into, first I'm going to go into some background on reinforcement learning, and then I'll talk um, about both how we learn search heuristics and how we leverage them. So reinforcement learning is a technique that it's a machine learning technique that's recently been used to solve a number of challenging AI tasks. Um, so this includes things like Atari Pong, um, robot manipulation tasks, and perhaps most famously, um, it was recently used to solve the game Go. And at their core, all of these problems are really search problems. For example, in the case of games, the goal is to look for some strategy for playing the game that wins with high probability. Re uh, reinforcement learning problems are typically formulated as Markov decision processes, or MDPs. And uh, to, I'm going to give a brief overview of MDPs, and I'm going to do so using a kind of toy example where a robot is um, searching in a maze of rooms for a treasure. And in this example, the robot isn't going to be allowed to backtrack, so it's only going to get one shot to try to get to the treasure. So um, the states, so first to specify an MDP, we need to define the set of states. So in this case, it's just going to be the set of rooms. And basically, it's the set of all um, configurations of the system. So the state represents what room the robot is in. So next, we also need to specify the initial distribution of states. Um, so basically, where the robot starts. Um, for example, maybe the robot will always start in room A. 
We also need to specify the final state, so where the task is completed. Uh, and in this example, it's going to be the dead end rooms, which are rooms C, D, and F. Next, we need to specify that the actions that the robot is allowed to take. Um, and the actions in this example are basically going to be to move to the right or down. Um, next, uh, we also need to specify the transitions that happen when we take a given action in a given state. Um, so basically, if I take action A in state S, what state do I end up in? Um, so for, in our example, um, for example, the robot might take action move right from room A, in which case it would end up in room B. Uh, and finally, the goal of the robot, um, as I'll discuss in a moment, is to maximize the reward over its, um, um, the trajectory of states that it visits. Um, so we need to define a reward function for giving the robot these rewards. Um, so this is basically a map from state, state action pairs um, to a real number. And uh, the re reward we're going to use for this example can just be uh, giving a reward of 1 for finding the treasure in room F and 0 in every other state. So this MDP uh, that I, this toy, um, the MDP for this toy problem can be pictorially represented using the automaton shown on the bottom right. So next, the, our goal is to find a policy for telling the robot what to do in order to get high reward. So a policy is just a map from states to actions. So for every state, it tells the robot which action it should take. Um, so in this R example, um, it, yeah, it just says which, um, it, for a given room, which direction the robot should go in. So one example of a policy is shown using the red arrows. Um, so basically what this policy says is that in room A, um, the robot should move right, so it'll get to room B. Um, then it should move down, so it gets to room E. And finally, it should move to the right again, so it gets to room F and finds the treasure. So um, for this policy, it'll get a reward of 1 uh, for this trajectory. The goal of reinforcement learning is to compute the polic a policy um, pi, which achieves high cumulative reward, where our cumulative reward is just the sum of the rewards along the trajectory visited by the robot. Um, and yeah, here we it's also taken an expectation with respect to the initial state distribution. So we want to do well on average according to our random initial states. Um, so that was kind of reinforcement learning in a nutshell. Um, next, I'm going to describe how we use reinforcement learning to learn search heuristics for relational verification. So uh, I'm going to do this in two steps. The first step is going to be um, describing how we formulate relational verification as an MVP. And then in the second step, I'm going to give a little bit of detail on what reinforcement learning algorithm we use. So we're going to be considering a relational verifier which is formulated as a set of inference rules. And the basic structure of all of these inference rules um, has three parts. Um, the first part, so the antecedent is divided into two parts. Um, so first you have the verification conditions. And these you can think of as um, the, the kind of conditions that we're eventually going to discharge using some. Uh, so they're, um, formulas and some underlying theory, and we're eventually going to discharge them using some kind of underlying theory solver. Um, we also have the current lemmas. So these are actually um, things that we've proven so far as part of the search algorithm. Um, and finally, assuming that both conditions and the antecedent hold, so both the verification conditions and the current lemmas, then we can derive the consequent, which is a new lemma um, that we've proven to be true. So we're actually going to be doing the search in the backwards direction. So we're going to start from what we want to prove, which is what we're going to call the current proof goal. And then from that, we can apply an inference rule to obtain a new set of proof goals, um, as well as some verification conditions for applying this inference rule. Um, so just to show this in a little, how, how this works using a toy example. Um, so suppose we have two inference rules. R and R prime, shown on the left-hand side here. Um, yeah, so both of them have a verification condition shown in red. Um, both of them have the, the current proof role is for G1, which is some um, relational property. And then um, R doesn't generate any new proof uh, goals. And R prime generates two new proof goals, G2 and G3. So we're going to start from G1. Um, so I'm assuming that the thing that we want to prove is G1. And now from this um, initial state, 
we can, so this is, we're going to refer to G1 as an undischarged subgoal. So it's something that still remains to be um, proven. So from G1, we can apply the inference rule R to get this, um, this new part, this, yeah, I'm also going to refer to this as a partial derivation. So, um, and we're going to incrementally build up a full complete derivation from this partial derivation. So from this partial derivation, we can apply rule R to get this derivation um, shown on the right. Um, so this is actually going to be a, because there are no um, undischarged subgoals, this is actually going to be a complete proof strategy. Um, so all we need to do to prove the property G1 using this proof strategy is to check if the verification condition holds. And if the verification condition holds according to some underlying solver, uh, then we've successfully proven the property. If it fails, then um, this proof strategy actually is unsuccessful. So alternatively, we could also proceed by um, applying inference rule R prime, and then we'll get a new partial derivation. So this time there are additional undiscard subgoals. So we're going to have to iteratively um, apply more and more inference rules in order to um, discharge these sub rules until we get a complete proof strategy. And then we do the same thing where we aggregate all the verification conditions and throw them at a underlying uh, a theory solver. Okay, so that was kind of a, um, an example. So now I'm gonna go into some of the details of how we actually define all the parts of the MDP. Um, so first, uh, the states of the MDP are just going to be these partial derivations. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to represent these partial derivations using um, what we call a data structure that we call a proof strategy. And really all it is is just a um, tree data structure that mirrors the partial derivation. And we're going to represent um, these undischarged subgoals using the bottom symbol here. So, uh, so those are the states. Um, next, the initial state distribution is um, going to be defined as follows. So, to san um, so first of all, remember that we have a training benchmark of um, relational verification problem instances. So to sample initial state, we're going to first sample a problem instance from this training set, and then we're going to construct the initial proof strategy for that um, so, oh, so the, um, the problem instance is just going to consist of some goal that we want to prove. Uh, so we're just going to construct the initial proof strategy for that goal. And that's shown at the bottom over here. So it's exactly the same as the initial um, state that we started with in the example. Um, so final states are just going to be complete, complete proof strategies. Uh, in other words, no undischarged subgoals. So next, the actions are going to be um, to take the current state, which is, a, um, which is some kind of proof strategy, and look for some undischarged subgoal in that proof strategy and apply an inference rule to try to, um, to fill that, to continue the derivation. Um, and the transitions, once you've chosen an inference rule, the transitions will just ex extend the proof strategy using the chosen inference rule. So um, in this example down here, um, the node V3 corresponds to an, undis um, an undischarged proof goal. And as you can see, using inference rule R3, um, we've kind of filled it with um, with a, um, with a, we filled it with a new node, and this new node actually itself has a new um, undischarged proof uh, goal, so we're going to have to continue um, applying more inference rules to getting a complete strategy. Um, so finally, the rewards in the MDP are going to be zero everywhere except for certain complete proof strategies. So if we do have a complete proof strategy, we're going to aggregate the verification conditions and check if they're satisfiable according to the underlying solver. Um, in particular, for relational verification, um, we're going to use the second order constrained horn clause solver to perform this check. And the reward is going to be one if this check is successful and zero otherwise. Um, so just to kind of summarize, here is a diagram that shows the full MDP. Um, so the states are these um, proof strategies. The transitions, um, actions and transitions are applying these inference rules to the proof strategies. And you can see an example of the final state on the top right over there um, where there are no um, undischarged subgoals. Um, so next, so that's how we formulate relational verification as an MDP. Uh, next, I'm going to say a little bit about the reinforcement learning algorithm we use. 
Um, so we're going to use the policy gradient algorithm, which is a standard reinforcement learning algorithm. Um, it basically optimizes the cumulative um, reward by using stochastic gradient descent. And we're actually going to modify it slightly because unlike the, some standard, the standard formulation of reinforcement learning, we're actually going to take the um, policy and perform, an, as I'll discuss in a moment, we're actually going to take the policy and then perform an enumerative search according to this policy. And um, in contrast, for standard reinforcement learning problems, they really only care about one attempted, um, one attempt according to the policy. So they only care about the top one attempt, whereas we maybe care about the top R attempts according to some search strategy. Um, so we're actually in the reward, we're actually going to aggregate the reward over the top R trajectories visited by our policy as part of the search algorithm I'll describe in a moment, not just the first one it finds. So next, I'm going to describe, once we learn this neural network, how we actually leverage it to, um, how we actually leverage it to speed up the search process. Um, and basically, we're just going to use the policy probabilities to guide the enumerative search. So first, we're going to define, uh, given a complete proof strategy, we're going to define its probability to be the product of the probabilities of the inference rules used to construct that proof strategy according to the neural network policy that we learned. So now we get all these probabilities for every con um, search strategy, uh, proof strategy, and our relational verification algorithm is just going to enumerate these proof strategies according to these, in descending order of these probabilities. So it's going to try the most likely one first and, and then keep going until it finds a successful one. Um, so in addition, um, for failing instances, we can actually use the unsat core from the solver in order to help prune the search space, which, um, yeah, which helps speed things up as well. Um, so finally, I'm going to talk about our evaluation. Um, so we implemented our approach and tried it on two problem domains. Um, the first one is a translation validation benchmark. Uh, so in, in this case, we want to show that the source code is equivalent to some compiled version of it. Um, the second one is an exist, a benchmark from an existing tool. Um, so it's the Veramat benchmark, and these are pairs of programs written by humans, and we want to prove that um, for these pairs of programs, various properties about the relationships between these pairs, um, including equivalence and some other ones. Um, so it, it's a very different um, benchmark, and you need very different proof strategies because looking at two human written programs, they can be different in very dramatic ways. Um, for example, one human might use recur um, recursion versus using loops, um, whereas for um, com compilation, usually the, the transformations are much more structured, so the kinds of um, proof strategies you want to use may be very different. Um, so we compare to two baselines. Uh, first, we compare to, uh, these are just um, kind of state-of-the-art relational verification tools, um, Descartes and Veramap. Um, so first, I'm just going to show how our tool performs uh, compared to a number of ablations. Um, so uh, in, here is we're looking at the translation validation benchmark. Um, so our tool, as you can see, performs really well. Um, we also compare it to two ablations where rather than doing the enumerative search, we look at the, um, we just look at some samples according to the neural network um, or at just, um, that's in orange, just doing some random sampling according to the probabilities of the neural network and also just looking at the single most likely um, proof strategy um, from the neural network. And in red and purple, we also show two ablations where we completely don't use the neural network at all. And as you can see, um, we're doing, even just using the single best proof strategy according to the neural network, we're already doing um, substantially better than some of these kind of searches that aren't guided by the neural network. So clearly it's providing a lot of value compared to those two ablations. Um, but then doing the enumerative search again provides a big boost. Um, so here is a similar trend on the Veramap benchmark. And finally, um, we also compare to two baselines, uh, and as you can see, no matter how you uh, measure the results, um, we substantially outperform both um, baselines. And again, the trends are similar for the Veritmap benchmark as well. And so just to conclude, we think reinforcement learning is a really promising way to scale up verification, uh, and, but there's a lot of future work to be done. Uh, we think there are various ways to uh, improve our approach, uh, especially the, first, the second part on how we leverage the um, neural network to do search, um, and also um, 
we think that these techniques are more general and may be applied to theorem proving beyond relational verification. So uh, thanks for listening, and I'll be happy to take any questions. If you have questions, please come up towards the front and grab a mic. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, so great talk. So uh, can you explain why relational verification would be the first target you guys choose, and why not something else? Yeah, so it's kind of like what I was alluding to at the beginning, where relational verification is really characterized by these really large search spaces. Um, before we kind of throw it off to a solver. So even before you throw it off to an SMT solver or CHC solver, you need to explore this really large space of search strategies. Um, and uh, did you ever try this same technique, um, you know, just a standard safety verification? Or? We have not tried it yet, but it's something that we're interested in. I see. Is um, there any insight you have why you think it, it may not perform as well as the uh, relation of verifications? Or? Um, I mean, I think the main thing is just, uh, I mean, it may perform very well. We're not, we, we don't have any great insights. Or maybe um, the great existing insights, tool already do very well. Where, sorry? Is it possible that the existing tool that you showed can already do very well on the non-relational verifications? And um, these tools are geared towards relational verification. Oh, okay. But it is true that, I guess, relational verification is a newer area, so there's I been, see. these tools are less optimized. All right. And yeah, you can kind of think of reinforcement learning as a hammer to, you know, automatically develop new search strategies. Okay. That's not... Thank you, Osborne, again. Thank you.